Well, well, well. This truly was a very impressive episode. The problem I saw popping up in last week's episode with a very predictable pattern, it seems to be gone now. It's shattered. You no longer need to worry because this episode breaks the episodic curse that's been happening for the past couple episodes. And what I'm getting at is, for every single episode since the beginning, you had to wear a Zodiac, would be a main focus of an episode, they would get their backstory, characterization, and then they would die at the end. And that was a repeated thing that was happening constantly. It happened with, you know, boar, happened with dog, then it happened with chicken, and then, so I would assume that, you know, this episode, Monkey's episode, she would die at the end. But that was not the case which makes me very happy with this series because this lets us know that it's not predictable. It's not. It's not predictable anymore. So we don't have to worry about every single episode of Zodiac dying and if they get characterization or, you know, backstory or anything, that they, that means they die. So I'm glad to see that that is not the case. However, I have seen this done a couple of times in shows quite like this when it is episodic in terms of just characters dying. And I know series like this tend to add double deaths when they don't have a death in an episode. So there is a very likely possibility that next episode will probably have two character deaths. I, I could definitely see something like that happening. Easily. It may not be Monkey, but I could easily see two people dying in the next episode. Anyways, so let's talk about the context of Junie Tyson's episode 4. So... I want to state right now, in terms of character design, I did not realize that the monkey, okay, Yuki, she was wearing, like, a garter belt. She, she's, her, her outfit is, like, I, I did not realize what it was until I had a really good look at her in this episode when she had a lot of focus. I'm like, that outfit is, um, that's a pretty fiery and outfit like that's amazing like a 10 out of 10 you know no no 11 out of 10 outfit for monkey in this episode i'm like them thighs though like them thighs but the, the design of the character i just i wasn't really aware or didn't even notice how her outfit was until i really had a good look in this episode when there was just a lot of screenshots or a lot of shots of her from the side to the back to the front and all i'm like clearly like they wanted you to notice that with this episode, at least when it came to the fan service reasons. Anyways, let's get into the real stuff, okay? You know, enough messing around. So, basically, we get to see some characterization for Monkey or Yuki and see what drives her. And in this case, we see where she started. And it seems like her teachers are actually legit monkeys. So, it's not where, like, she took the title of Monkey or whatever. She literally had monkeys teaching her, and she's kind of like a monk. She was a monk being taught by monkeys on top of, like, you know, a monitor or whatever, and then she learnt, and then she eventually, you know, got this personality to where she didn't want to kill people. She wanted to change society to where, you know, there could be peace. And so, that shows us the origin story, what led her to be like she is. So anyways, when we see her go from battlefield to battlefield to kind of overall help out negotiate, we find out that she has actually stopped over 500 500 different wars, civil wars to just big wars, like global wars and all that, she's stopped over 500. That's crazy. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of wars. That, that's a lot of wars that Monkey was able to stop in that moment. And that was just truly impressive to see that number. But it was also impressive to see her skill set and what she would exactly do to kind of negotiate with two different countries. And so in this case, we get kind of a viewpoint on what she normally does before she joined the Juni Tyson. Now, before I knew she was going to die or live, I, I was under the impression she was going to die at the end of the episode. So I was like, I didn't want to get too attached to her character overall. But anyways, though... We get to find out that she was someone that would take different means to negotiate. She would go around certain, you know, political ambassadors and then talk to the public and all that and allow it to where she forced these certain negotiators into a spot like up against the wall to where they were forced to be peaceful with each other. In this case, that's what she did. She made it to where these two countries that were bickering and fighting for over a century, she talked to the individuals that were a part of the army, which were a part of the state that were kind of integrated into these two states states 
and she managed to talk to him and say, hey, you know, what you should do is just lay down your arms, say you want a ceasefire, and you want to, you know, form your own country, the land that was taken from you. You just don't want to be a part of this anymore. And anyone that doesn't want to be a part of this war can just go to this country, and then that basically means that a ceasefire would be forced to happen, for both countries won't have to worry about this in general. So you had it to where, basically, she forced the hand of both sides. She played a little bit dirty, she used a country that was ravaged by the war, and she made it to where, like, they would you know, go into that country if they didn't want to fight, and if you did want to fight, you would just stay in the two main countries, which put them both in a spot, and they had to drop all war for, you know, they didn't have to worry anymore. They didn't have to worry about people leaving their country and leaving them completely defenseless. However, this offered a whole new level of issues for what happened. So basically, like how real society is, if a country is at war and all that, and they've been fighting for a long time. Obviously, there's going to be people in the background that are probably benefiting from it. It just, that is how society is. That's how governments work. That's how many things. You know, a lot of times, countries, they benefit from war. They do. And they make money, profit, or production, or whatever. It boosts. It does boost sometimes. It boosts economy, depending on the type of war, obviously. But in this case, most likely the bigger, you know, countries and stuff behind the scenes, they were probably benefiting from this war, and eventually when they saw that the war was stopping and a new country was being formed and all that, obviously the top dogs of the world, they don't want to deal with that. They don't want to worry about that. These people that are forming a new country that could possibly just, you know, unbalance things and make it to where, like, oh, hey, there's not going to be fighting anymore, we can't make money off this or whatever, and so basically they want to put a stop to it. So in this case, when you see the new country that's formed that wanted to be peaceful get destroyed by a whole other, you know, faction, a different entire country, it showed how the world is. It shows that regardless of negotiations and regardless of, you know, two people that were in the fight putting aside their differences, there'll always be someone outside that wants to start and stir the pot. And that's basically what happened. Someone that was kind of completely irrelevant in the grand scheme of things in terms of the fight, what was really going on, stirred the pot to start things up. And that's just how we are as human beings. We always stir the pot. We always cause problems, even if we're not you know, a part of the discussion of the main problem, we try to stir it for we can be a part of it, and then just problems arise once again. So war is just something that happens. There can never be permanent peace. And that's basically what Monkey had to find out. And so probably what led her to the Juni Tyson and why she wants to make a wish to where the world can be peaceful, because she doesn't want to have to deal with this anymore. She doesn't want to have to deal with the fact that, you know, hey, you know, wars are constantly happening, people can't agree or be nice to each other, she kind of wants to help out the world and negotiate, but also save everybody in the Juni Tyson. So anyways, overall, what Monkey wants to accomplish is very noble. She seems to be a relatively good person, not necessarily a bad person, and I guess we can truly assume that she is one of the nicest characters probably in this series. Now, I don't know if that's probably going to get her far because of her type of personality. She is good with, you know, probably wits and talking to people, but overall, she most likely will not make it to the very end of the series because I've seen a lot of characters like this, especially good characters that are in this type of series. They usually get killed off rather quickly because stuff like this, usually smart characters don't last long. They don't because it actually kind of hurts the flow of the plot in some ways. So I could see her not lasting very long. She'll probably die, not probably next episode, but maybe a couple episodes down the road towards the finale. Anyways, though, let's talk about Rat for a second. So Rat, his viewpoint is very fascinating. What he talks about is something that I actually talked about yesterday in my Children of the Wells review. You remember how I said ignorance is bliss? I talked about that and how society of children of the wells, that what led them to be so defenseless and weak is because of their peace and how nobody informed them what was going on. Basically, that concept could be applied to this episode. Rat talks about peace and how peace is kind of disgusting because there's different ways to look at peace. Number one, to, something that's too peaceful or times that are too peaceful can make it to where people are relatively weak. Not in terms of like weak as in strength, but weak as in they don't know how to defend themselves when problems really do arise because they're not used to it or they're not trained or taught to know how to comprehend or understand it. Basically very similar to what happened in Children of the Wells. Or in this case, peaceful times, people take for granted peace and they don't realize what others are doing for them. And he makes a very valid point. He's like, 
Okay, so let's just say you're a regular student of a school and you have, you know, war going on and there's a big army fighting out there on another country or whatever and that's part of your country. Basically, you'll probably think, ah, it's not my problem. It, it, it's not my problem. I, I'm not a soldier. I'm not there. It's not my problem. It's irrelevant to me. And that's what he was trying to say. He's like, sometimes with peaceful times, people tend to forget that they should be aware and ready to stand up for what they believe in if they're forced to. And in this case, basically, peace could cause where people become you know, I guess, unaware of the things around them, and they kind of lose track of what they really need to do, and they just get too comfy, and that's what he's basically saying, he's like, what you have right now, what you want to do, monkey, it's a very nice and noble thing overall, you're a very good person, you don't have a toxic personality, you're a good person, but overall, though, what you seek and what you want is not a possibility at this moment because of how humanity is we are someone we're a civilization that honestly if we have too much of a peaceful time there will be people that will come in and just trample all over us so i do like the ideology in this episode very nice stuff overall throughout the episode so yeah besides that we also have a little bit of a action scene we get to see at the end that rabbit's going to be initiating against you know rat and monkey and most likely Rabbit will be gone in the next episode. So I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to seeing how this man goes down. Because so far from what we have seen from, you know, this uh, series, we know that Rabbit is probably one of the most dangerous because he's able to bring people back. So every time he kills a warrior, he's just adding more to his arsenal and being able to use their abilities and then just win. So they need to take him down quickly because he's the number one threat right now because if he continuously kills people and gets people on his side, it's GG for everyone else. So he needs to be taken out overall. So anyways, I want to end it there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, how you felt about this week's episode. How'd you feel about Monkey's back? story how'd you feel about apparently she has a lover do you think that you know she'll be able to make it back and be reunited with him be honest in the comments below if you like the series also let me know if you enjoy my video please leave a like and if you like my content please subscribe i love you guys you have a wonderful day or night wherever you live please be safe she be out